Joining us now is the Environment Minister, George Eustace. Hello to you, Mr Eustace. A bit of a surprise that we saw our own PM um, in Kiev cementing, um, I suppose, the conviction that the Brits are doing what they can to support Ukraine in this, their hour of need. Well, absolutely. In fact, I think the whole world is coming together to show you know, solidarity and support of Ukraine about what's happened. Uh, that's why the, the Prime Minister announced yesterday that we would be making available more, you know, defensive military equipment uh, to the Ukrainians, additional uh, missiles and so on. We've been uh, giving them support from, from the beginning. But also it's so important that we uh, remain absolutely resolute when it comes to sanctions against Russia. We must ensure uh, that Putin cannot prevail on this. Uh, the, the Ukrainians have been incredibly uh, brave. Uh, I think President Zelensky has led his people well, uh, and we've all been humbled, really, by the, the, the acts of bravery we've seen, but also deeply shocked by some of these terrible scenes that we're seeing coming out now from the cities from which Russia's withdrawn. Yeah, an A-star then for the support for Ukraine on the ground, but must try harder when it comes to refugees, even Priti Patel, the uh, Home Secretary, apologising for the fact that we are not moving quickly enough to help refugees who want to come to the UK. Well, obviously, it's different for countries that are bordering the Ukraine because people are fleeing a war like this obviously will cross the nearest land border. And that's why countries like you know, Poland and Hungary obviously are getting uh, more of those refugees coming in. But we have now issued visas under the two schemes we've got, in particular the sponsorship scheme to around 40,000 uh, Ukrainians and around 12,000 of those are already here. We've made some changes already, making clear, for instance, that those with a Ukrainian passport don't need to attend uh, an appointment in person. And um, I know that Priti Patel is looking very closely at this to look at whatever else can be done uh, to remove any barriers uh, as and when those arise. Yeah, well, um, Dublin doesn't border um, Ukraine either, but they're doing a lot better than we are. Well, look, <clears throat> there are, as I said, some differences uh, between uh, countries, but uh, Priti Patel's already made some changes, removing that need uh, for an appointment in person for those with a passport. Uh, she's also made clear that if there's other things that we can do to speed up the process, we will. Uh, there's been a huge outpouring, I think, of generosity around the country, different local authorities seeking to be involved. Uh, we financially supported around 27 local authorities to stand up hubs and reception centres to help refugees that are coming here. And I think many people want to do their bit to help. OK. Do you understand why people are angry about the revelations about Rishi Sunak and his wife? Well, look, Rishi Sunak and his wife have spoken for themselves on this. Uh, I'm not his accountant. I'm not responsible, obviously, for his, uh, for his tax affairs, or those, indeed, of his wife. She gave a statement over the weekend. She's uh, now made clear that although... Uh, she hasn't done anything wrong. Um, you know, she, uh, she's a, a citizen of, uh, of India and um, grew up and was born in India and has some income from that. Nevertheless, she's changing her tax arrangement so that she would pay the tax on that income here in the UK. And Rishi himself, there's been some speculation around that. He's uh, written to the Prime Minister and asked the advisor uh, on ministerial standards to look at this case. Uh, he's very clear that he's you know, declared um, everything that should have been declared at the right time. And there is a process here that you have as a minister. You, you declare all your interests to the permanent secretary in your department and the cabinet office then, uh, you know, decide which bits should be made uh, public, which bits they should be aware of. There's a, a duty of candour in both directions. And Rishi's very clear that he's, uh, that he's, he's been very candid about his, uh, his own arrangements at every stage. And in answer to my question... Uh, well, your question um, uh, was, are people angry about this? And I've just set out um, the position and, and how they've responded to it. Yeah. Do you understand why the British people are angry that the man who has increased tax for them, his wife was uh, not paying uh, tax on overseas income to the um, extent of millions of pounds? Do you understand why there is anger amongst the British public on that? Well, look, I think people should judge the Chancellor. He is Why the Why don't you just say yes? Chancellor. I mean, it's obvious. It's obvious. I mean, are you so out of touch as a government that you don't understand that people are struggling to feed their kids, whereas the man who's, who's enforcing these uh, laws on them, these taxes on them, uh, is, is rolling in it? Well, the man who uh, is Chancellor at the moment has paid all of his taxes and paid taxes on his uh, income and declared all of that in the UK, and he's been uh, clear about that. Uh, and that's, you know, we, of course, there is a 
pressure on cost of living at the moment. We all recognise that. Now, we all recognise that there are some um, difficult decisions coming down the, the tracks when it comes to tax to, to help get the NHS uh, back on track. But we're also doing all that we can to help people through these difficult times. OK. Uh, what about his green card? I know he's given it up now, but he was Chancellor when he had a green card for residency in another country while he was responsible for UK tax. Well, look, he worked in the United States and sent for many years. Um, he was based out there, lived out there, worked out there. And yes, um, there was a, uh, if you like, a hangover from that period when he was working in the US where he retained uh, that green card. But obviously, uh, he got rid of that a couple of years ago, I think. Um, no, I'm sure he, he was got still rid of it in MP. October. In October. Well, it, he's got rid of the green card now, but what I'm saying yeah, but he was is... My he, point is he was responsible for UK tax uh, while he was resident in another country. Uh, that, according to, don't take it from me, according to some of your backbenchers, saying that it doesn't pass the political cricket test that you're committed to the UK. Well, all I'm saying is he worked in the United States for a while. During that period, he had a green card. He kept that green card uh, for a period after that. But as I understand it, it hasn't affected uh, the tax that he's paid here in the UK. That's not my point. My point is that he was a resident in another country and he was responsible for what you and I and my viewers this morning pay in tax. How does that pass the test of fairness? Well, he had a green card, um, a US green card, and I'm not an expert on that, never had one myself, nor would I ever uh, seek to have one, to be honest. Uh, but look, uh, he's now referred himself to the advisor uh, on uh, standards and of ministerial interests. Uh, Lord Guide will look at all of this and will... Uh, you know, make an assessment about whether he declared all the right things at the right time. Um, Sajid Javid now revealing that he previously had non-DOM status. Can you anticipate anybody else in the Cabinet coming forward to say the same thing? Well, um, I don't. Uh, all I can tell you, as I said, I'm, I'm not uh, the accountant for my uh, ministerial colleagues in Cabinet. Uh, I don't know uh, anybody who may or may not have had non-DOM status. I can tell you uh, that I never have and uh, would, would never seek to have one. That's something we have in common. Um, should spouses ever be fair game? Well, look, I think, um, in reality, I think when it comes to politics, we all know that there's a heightened level of scrutiny for those that get involved in politics, and that can affect family. Um, should it? I, I think it probably shouldn't. I think um, politicians who put themselves up into public life um, expect that higher level of scrutiny. <clears throat> Often with that will come some extra scrutiny on their family and that's understood. But I think um, generally, no, I think it should be uh, the focus on those elected politicians, uh, what they do principally uh, in the job. And, um, and I, I think it, it's wrong that families should be drawn into it in that way. Do you think that we, as the British public, should have any view on the fact that Mrs Murty, although she's now saying that she um, will pay taxes on her foreign income, which could amount to many millions of pounds, she won't have to pay inheritance tax because she's still uh, a non-DOM. That means she's going to save potentially hundreds of millions of pounds. Is that morally right? Well, as I said, she is not the Chancellor. Um, she's not in politics. She's the no, wife of she's the been Chancellor. Um, she's... If I may interrupt you there, Minister, no, but she, is, she was for a long time uh, living in taxpayer-funded accommodation. Well, and she has made clear, and, you know, she's spoken for herself uh, on these matters. She's not part of the government. It's not for me really to speak for her, but she has spoken for herself on this, that she's going to change her tax arrangements so that she does pay uh, income tax on the income that she earns from overseas. There's nothing wrong with what she's been doing, but she said, nevertheless, that she will uh, make that uh, payment going forward. And I think it's for her, really, to, to speak for her own uh, affairs uh, on these matters. It's not for me, as I said. I'm not her tax advisor. Um, she's not part of the government. It's not really for me to uh, speak for her on her own ta individual personal tax affairs. No, but my point is that she was living with the family in taxpayer-funded accommodation, and she was saving many, many millions of pounds by using her non-DOM status. That has been brought to the public's attention, and the um, would-be Prime Minister has now decided that that will not happen going forward, but it, it's now become uncovered that um, she won't have to pay... Um, a tax on an inheritance, or she won't have to pay inheritance tax. And I'm asking you whether you feel, uh, you, know, you must have a view, do you feel that that is morally right? Well, look, the Chancellor, who's part of the government, has now you know, referred himself 
uh, to Lord Gait and asked him to investigate all of his own arrangements, uh, all of his own tax affairs and what he declared and uh, what was uh, made public on his ministerial declaration at the time, uh, that investigation will take place. You know, the tax affairs of his wife are a different matter, and she has given an account of that over the weekend, made clear that she intends to pay tax uh, on some of that foreign income going forward. And I think really, you know, it's for her to talk about her own tax affairs. As I said, I'm not qualified to, I'm not her accountant, I'm not even an accountant at all. Not but um, that you but are, I can comment Mr. on what they... But you are representing the government this morning, and you know... That's right, that she's not part of the government, of, of the Chancellor. Uh, no, but she lived in taxpayer-funded accommodation. We've made that... Clear. She's married to a man who wants to be prime minister, who is charging uh, people millions of pounds in taxes that they can ill afford at the moment. Half a million kids are in uh, real poverty, have been plunged into real poverty as a result of what's happened over the last few weeks and months. Does it not offend you in any way? Well, look, I'm somebody as a cabinet colleague of uh, Rishi Sunak, the Chancellor. I judge ministerial colleagues based on their performance in the role. And I think Rishi Sunak has performed very well as Chancellor of the Exchequer during some extraordinarily uh, difficult times. And he himself has now referred himself to uh, Lord Geitz, the, uh, minister, the Prime Minister's advisor on ministerial standards, to look at these matters. Uh, and I, I'm really not going to get drawn into commenting uh, you know, any further than I have on his wife's tax affairs. As I said, I'm not qualified to. She's given an account of those herself. Every MP's um, family at, at, at some level, you know, live in what you might call taxpayer-funded accommodation because most MPs obviously, uh, you know, maintain um, a, a presence in both London okay. and in their constituencies. OK, something I know that you do want to talk about is um, the announcement that your department is making today. Tell me more. Fly tipping has been a, a really difficult problem in recent years. Um, and what we are announcing today is a couple of things. First of all, removing the charge that some local authorities, around a third of them, still charge people for disposing of uh, items like plasterboard if they've been doing DIY. We're going to you know, remove uh, their ability to charge for that, to uh, you know, remove one of those incentives perhaps for people to fly tip. These items are often... Uh, associated with fly tipping. But also linked to that on the enforcement side, we're supporting a number of local authorities with some pilot schemes uh, using CCTV in a creative way to try to catch the criminals that are responsible for fly tipping. In most local authorities, it's a relatively small number of people. and We want to help them identify who they are so that we can bring them to justice and stop this problem. OK, Minister, I, I must let you go, I know, but it's always great to talk to you. Hopefully see you soon. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.